Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, very nice to meet you, and uh, my pleasure, really, to be invited here to talk about the LoRa uh, uh, revolutionary technology for IoT LP1. I'm Tony Lee from Samtech Corporation as a sales marketing VP in China. So I welcome uh, any questions during my presentations because I'm a sales. So I really hope to see your interest in our products. Let me begin with uh, you know, some uh, statics uh, from the forecast from the industrial experts and also uh, analysts and uh, research search firm about the opportunity for IoT connected devices. So everybody point out by 2020, there's a few billions uh, connected devices okay, in this uh, industry. Obviously, it's a very big opportunity uh, by combined technologies. Uh, actually, today, we only focus on the LPWAN, <coughs> uh, LP1, uh, definitely uh, focus on LoRa particularly. There's a lot of technology uh, for different needs. For traditional cellular, we have 2G, 3G, 4G. Basically, they have very good QoS, high bandwidth, but remain very challenges for the low power and the long battery, uh, low cost uh, application uh, needs. And for Wi-Fi, it is uh, well established in the indoor applications, very high bandwidth, but also very challenging on the, <coughs> on the power, uh, uh, power needs and also very challenging on the uh, cost. And for Bluetooth, it's a very short range, but very uh, low power and uh, low cost devices. So there's uh, still a gap in the industry uh, to uh, really achieve very long range and lower data rate, but longer battery lives. So uh, LoRa actually fills the gap it is designed to address the need for the very long range, low data rate, and also uh, long battery applications. I will talk about some features, key features, uh, in the following slides of LoRa. Sorry, yeah. So uh, before I talk about features, let's review a little bit about the LoRa's history. Uh, in 2013, we've launched the first LoRa devices. And 14, we, we first worked with our customer operators to have the first trial networks uh, in the world. And in 2015, we have 113 members uh, using LoRa in the LoRa Alliance. These uh, applications include multi sensors, gateways, modules, and also public private networks. In last year, 2016, we have over 400 LoRa Alliance members, over 100 regions already deployed LoRa networks. And also we introduced the low power geolocation uh, features of LoRa networks. So if you look at only last four, three, four, five years, LoRa uh, commercial deployment really growing very fast. This is the key features we talk about for LoRa. So the first thing is that uh, long range. If you look at this, uh, in the open market, open area, rural area, LoRa can e easily reach about well above 15 uh, miles uh, outdoors. And also even in the dense, uh, dense uh, city area, it can also easily reach five, five kilometers. Uh, obviously, it's also heavily depending on how deep indoor the sensors are installed. But on average, uh, compared with other technology, our, uh, our distance is much longer. And also, uh, because of that, we can enable a ne uh, star network topology really to uh, reduce uh, antennas and uh, increase the stability of these uh, networks. That really helps uh, to lower the cost and enable a nationwide um, neural networks. And also for the 
power side, compared with uh, cellular technology, which is like a 500 millimeters transmitter power, actually for LoRa only like uh, a few million uh, amps uh, transmitter power uh, current. And also for the, if, if you talk about the sleep mode of LoRa, it's just a micro amps power consumptions. So that enabled LoRa to really operate for many years uh, for, for, for if you work with uh, some sensors for the IoT applications. And also, even it can be driven by the uh, energy harvesting technology like the solar panel, solar panel uh, for example. So it's really low power. And also because uh, uh, one gateway of LoRa networks can handle in like millions of <coughs> messages, that really helps to uh, reduce the cost uh, of the LoRa uh, networks and, and help the whole star networks very scalable and uh, even <coughs> really reduce the uh, operating cost of these uh, networks. So in general, compared with cellular technology, the cost of a network, no, LoRa networks really low uh, in, in terms of the gateway cost and also NO cost. Probably one of the biggest uh, um, topics of the, NORA, of, of the IoT network is uh, security. So recently we heard about a lot of uh, privacy breach uh, in the industry. That's really raised a concern of the concern of audience, right? So uh, for LoRa, we definitely introduced the highest standard of the IoT uh, networks. First of all, we have the, f uh, the unique network ID of NORA technology, NORA networks, which is unrelated to the end users. And also introduced like 128 bit um, encryption for the data transport into the networks. So for the networks operators, the, the ID of this uh, end users doesn't really invisible, doesn't really visible to them. So for all this um, data, data transport operators, actually they don't have any visibility of the data inside these no networks. That's really helped to uh, protect the privacy and security of this data. And a second big uh, feature of NORAWAN technology is uh, we have the standard, open standard and open source technology uh, for the LoRa Mac layer uh, protocols, which really enhance interoperability and also uh, enable uh, the roaming uh, features of LoRa devices in the networks. Other than that, we know that in the uh, LoRa networks, uh, the sensors sometimes really require the response from the gateway uh, to uh, acknowledge the receiving of the data or even uh, get the message to change the behavior or update the firmware of the sensors. So LoRa networks support the full bidirectional um, functions that really easily can uh, help the sensors to get the message from the gateway and also upgrade uh, the, the, the firmwares online. Uh, this is uh, other very important uh, features for the NORA networks, for the IoT networks. Another good feature is uh, true localization enabled by NORA networks itself instead of the GPS. Uh, I will have more details to talk about that later on. So this is a no uh, whole NORA one networks uh, uh, combination configuration here. Uh, thanks to the LoRa RF features, so basically uh, we have the end-to-end -end and star networks architecture for the LoRa One networks. It has three major features of these networks. First, it's basically cloud cloud-based uh, networks. Second, because um, we have the uh, end-to-end -end solution of these networks. <laughs> and uh, we have increased uh, the 
uh, number number of these uh, gateways without a, without a really adding more <laughs> uh, intelligence into the gateways. All the gateways actually behave like a one gateway, so uh, you don't need to do the handover when the gateway move from one ga uh, when the node move from one gateway or to another. So that really uh, makes the network network very scalable and also power very power effective. In terms of the power consumption here, because just the features I just mentioned, there's no handover and also star networks here, which reduce the routing in between the end node and the gateway. So the, the power here is very low, and that enables the nodes can operate for many years. This is one of the key features. And also on the security side, as I just mentioned, um, there's a unique network session key that is uh, in the uh, that is not related to the ID of this endnote. So everything is invisible uh, in the networks until you see the application server and see the data. So the security of this uh, network is pretty high. It's as same as uh, telecom networks. So in terms of all the features, makes uh, makes uh, LoRa networks really very operational and also uh, very scalable. Here is a, a worldwide LoRa deployment uh, for today. You can see that most of the r yellow color that's already been uh, deployed by LoRa, and there's a hundred more than 100 uh, new trials and deployment actually uh, in, in, in progress uh, worldwide. Uh, even now we know that uh, in Hong Kong, the central place, there's uh, all LoRa, LoRa coverage already happened. So if you have a LoRa the end device here, here now, you can try our LoRa networks in uh, Hong Kong central area, okay? And now, uh, in the uh, also in the we, we have more than four hundred members in the alliance. So, <laughs> only in the last five years, Laura already covered half of the whole world. Okay. So this is another case about the Laura range that can give you some of the idea how long, how large area Laura technology can cover, even with one single gateways. This is done by one of the customer, also the member of Laura Alliance. Cisco, they did a trial networks in uh, San, uh, San Jose, uh, California. Basically, they cover, they use one gateway cover like uh, two, 20, 20 miles uh, from the north to south, only with one only gateway. So compared with any other technology, you, you, can, you can know how long distance LoRa technology can cover. Um, this is another uh, serial you can, if you, if you really know this, uh, this is a basic uh, communication theory that the channel, the, the, the scientist uh, already put in the textbook many years, okay? This is a theoretic limit of RF technology, how uh, about the sensitivity and also the a data rate about one technology. This is a limit. Any technology cannot go beyond these green lines with, with, with no matter what technology modulation you can do, you can, you can only try to approach this underneath it. You cannot go beyond that. But LoRa actually is a technology already very close. We expect that in, in the industry in the next couple of years, there's no other technology can really go beyond the LoRa <coughs> to go close to the channel cap capacity boundaries. So if you look at the other technology like uh, FSK, you will see that uh, you know for the same for the same uh, data rate, the sensitivity difference between LoRa and FSK is about 20 dB. So that 
from that you can tell the difference of LoRa technology, why it is so long range and also very high sensitivity. This is another spec of the LoRa technology. If you look at this uh, spectrum uh, uh, chart, you can see that uh, uh, you know, for other technologies, if you want to get a data cracked, you have to have the signal amplitude above the north floor, like a 6 dB for the GS GMSK. But for LoRa, you can get the signal right even below the north floor, like a 20 dB. So that's why LoRa technology can reach very long di distance and also can be very indifferent with the interference in the air, RF interference in the air. And if you talk about the adjacent interference to the adjacent channel, if you talk about LoRa, some other RF signals interference to LoRa, you can see that immunity of LoRa modulation is quite high to other different RF signals. For example, FSK, the interference to LoRa adjacent channel is like a minus 25 dB. But if you talk about uh, FSK to FSK adjacent channel interference, it's like 8 to 12 dB. So you can see that LoRa is really indifferent with any interference, even himself. LoRa to LoRa adjacent interference is minus 25 dB. So that's why even not only long distance, but for the, but for the um, interference, RF noise interference, LoRa is the best technology compared with other modulations like FSK, OFDM. OFDM actually is a, is a modulation uh, used by the NBLT technology that you probably heard about that. So geolocalization, this is, um, if, you, if you work or tried any uh, tracking, RF tracking devices, you will see that the power consumption combination of the components really like this. For GPS, it takes about uh, like 80% uh, of the power consumption already. And MCU take a little bit, and the rest of the radio takes about 20% uh, of this uh, power consumption of the tracking devices. But with LoRa's geolocalization technology, you can save 80% of the GPS power consumptions. So actually, LoRa really provides that features to enable you to make very, very power effective tracking devices. Can last uh, like uh, four times at least of the existing GPS based uh, tracking devices. So how we uh, implement, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Accuracy, okay. So <coughs> We are doing a lot of uh, different modeling about this uh, uh, localization accuracy. So in the, in the open area, as I discussed, like, uh, you know, if we can reach like uh, 15 uh, miles in the open area, that accuracy is very high, like um, within 50 meters, within 50 meters. But in the dense area, if you have a lot of uh, high, high rises, then we need some other uh, complementary technology to reach that kind of uh, accuracy. Uh huh. So I will talk about the, the principle a little bit later on, about how we <laughs> do the geolocalization. But in general, in principle, um, if we can replace the, the GPS here, there's a lot of power consumption and make a lot of uh, uh, applications previously using the GPS possible without charging every day. 
Um, so we are actually uh, still developing this technology with our key partners, especially some operators, because this is uh, must based on the base stations. We have to we have to have uh, the second generation base stations to really support these features. Without changing the node, but we need uh, next generation uh, base stations. So uh, here we talk about some of the benefit of no, no, NORA networks using our gateways. So the gateway in the center, it is multi-channel gateways, scalable. We have indoor or outdoor uh, version of the gateways uh, based on our, based on Samtech uh, chipset. And also uh, we have the reference design, uh, everything open sources, all the firmware available. So with our customer, uh, they are very easier to adopt this gateway. And uh, we also have the commercial products of gateway are ready today uh, that our many uh, partners can provide the uh, gateways. This is the offer of Sante. Basically, Sante is not doing the system, not doing the system level products, modules. We only supply ICs, uh, integrated circuit devices to the market. So we, we have the uh, sensor side, the transmitters of our devices, and also the gateways. For gateways, we have indoor and outdoor uh, ICs, and also the RF front end that working with uh, two uh, gateways, the main chipset. And also we have different band covering different uh, you know, regions. For example, uh, in US and the Euro market, they need 800 megahertz uh, band devices, which is our 1272. And in China, in India, in many uh, countries, we are all operating at uh, 400 megahertz. So we have the 1278. But we have the full band device also. So we support all the sub G uh, band with our end nodes. Here's the details about these devices. I, will, I, will, I already left these uh, slides to, 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 the, uh, to the organizers. So you, you can get that uh, in details. And uh, this is a, ga a gateway uh, reference design and sensor node and device certifications. Um, we already, our device already passed FCC and also uh, Euro, Euro standard already. So using our device, don't have any concern. You don't have any concern to sell it in the worldwide, also including China. Here I want to talk about some of this uh, user cases that is, I think it may be interesting you more for example, agriculture uh, uh, with LoRa. Uh, if you look at the agriculture market, some, some in some re remote place, it's very hard to get the cellular coverage. But LoRa can really do the compensation of the network, uh, network coverage. Uh, for example, our, many of our customers use our sensors uh, in the field, monitoring the humidity and uh, uh, temperatures, many, many parameters for the crops, for the cows, and also uh, with very low cost and uh, very uh, power effective without changing uh, the, the battery for many years. And also for like asset management, for example, the gas tank. Uh, in Europe, we had one customer doing the, they put a sensor in the gas tank and tell the gas utility company in advance when they need to go and how much gas they need to bring to the end customers, which has a very good value proposition, save like 30% of their uh, operation cost because of this technology. Another, uh, a lot of user cases in the smart cities. For example, uh, in Shenzhen, actually, uh, the, one of the largest cities in China, we have the so-called in-road parking system. So you, you, can drive, uh, you can drive on the street and, uh, and uh, really parking just uh, at the sidewalk with the technology, with the sensors, 
on the ground, which can detect your uh, parking, your car is parking on, on above these uh, sensors, and then you pay it through WeChat or whatever. With the sensors, the sensors also have to talk with the networks. This is a LoRa en enabled networks. Actually, this really helps the government collect much more money than before with uh, with a manual system. Okay, and also uh, another uh, case for small buildings. For example, the smoke detectors. Right now uh, in China, our labor costs are also also raise very very high, right? So if you want to do the wireline uh, smart detectors, actually the, the labor cost is really high. Even uh, for one node, the labor cost is, is higher than the cost of the node. So with the te LoRa technology, with the high sensitivity and good penetration through the wall, you, you can do the smart detector without um, the wire, just, just using our uh, LoRa technology to connect all the small detectors here, like here. So without the wire line, save a lot of labor cost. So there's a lot of uh, smart building uh, applications that can use LoRa. We also have one uh, very important uh, sources for developers and also uh, our, our partners who can share the information, the application and knowledge. Uh, through our website. Basically, this is the LoRa Community and Micro website based on Sente, uh, Sente website. You can get all the information I just talked about, no matter what the user case you want to look for, and uh, you can find the example there, almost. So as a summary, LoRa definitely uh, enabled the Internet of Things and provide outdoor and, in the and uh, very deep indoor uh, connectivity and very low cost, also very scalable uh, architecture. And uh, last but not least, we have very strong ecosystem. We have a lot of partners. I think a partner also, even in this room, we have a couple of par partners already use our technology. So this product, not only the device, ICs, but all the uh, gateways or system solutions are already available today. So if you have any demand or interest in this product, just contact us. Thank you.